Hey, from New Jersey, it's the SNL Nerds, the show where two comics from New Jersey nerd out about Saturday Night Live. I'm your co-host, John Trumbull. And I'm your co-host, Darren Patterson. How you doing, Darren? Very good. I mean, I, I mean, our listeners probably won't hear that whole conversation we just had before this, but uh, it, uh, after that conversation, I'm uh, doing a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we had some interesting mic talk before we officially started the show. It is recorded, so if our uh, producer, Frank Kablaoui, is feeling adventurous and or cruel, uh, he'll put that up on the Patreon. So yeah, you'll find out. Uh, we learned a little something right before we started recording. We had to go to right. Urban Dictionary to learn the meaning of a term. Darren used a term. I was like, I think I sort of know what that means from context, but not entirely. And I, I want to just Google that real quick. Uh, so, and for, and Darren was like, don't do that from the studio computer. Cause, and I was like, Oh, is it something sexual? And he's like, no, it's not something sexual. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Darren only has a fuzzy understanding of this himself, apparently. Uh, fuzzy. So, so yeah, I went to urban dictionary and I was like, Oh wow, that's something. Um, and yes, it, apparently it was something sexual. Yeah, it's quite randy. Mm. Mm. So yeah, so so I got a little educated. So that's right. We uh, we try to have a laugh and learn here at mm. the SNL Nerds. Yep, yep. We we like that little before you know logo to just animate and yeah. happen right in front of our eyes. But right, or if you're old enough, the uh, one that's one to grow on. That's one to grow on. Yes, remember yes. that. I or do even. Yeah, or even if you're older enough, uh, knowing is half the battle. G.I. Yes. Joe. Was One to Grow On, that was the thing that only ran on the Saturday morning cartoons, right? Yeah, as far as I, from what I remember, it was like only on NBC. Like, I only remember seeing that after uh, the Smurfs or Snorks or something like that. I, I'm picturing it with like a headshot of Michael J. Fox, like Family Ties era Michael J. Fox. And I think... I'm picturing Michael J. Fox in particular because his picture was used in the comic book ads for the Saturday morning lineup. Mm, that sounds about and, right. And like you're getting all these cartoons plus one to grow on. And they, they just had Michael J. Fox in there as generic NBC celebrity. Right. The dreamy team, teen heartthrob, Michael J. Fox. Yeah. He was probably still popping up in tiger beat every once in a while at that time. Yeah, I could see that. It was like him, Menudo, uh, <laughs> And yeah, Kirk Kirk Cameron. Yeah, before before he totally changed, but yeah, yeah, like he was he was in those circles back in the day, right? Yeah, maybe right. maybe some new kids, or maybe that was a little bit later. Yeah, new kids were like late eighties, like they hit like eighty eight, eighty nine, something like that. Because I remember, I think I was in high school when they were a thing, right? So. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So maybe yeah, so like maybe earlier that'd be like the Ricky Schroeder. Type of era, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Ricky Schroeder's more of a an accurate teen heartthrob. Right. It's like, oh, he's a dreamboat. Okay, but enough about eighties dreamboats. We are not here to talk about eighties dreamboats. For that, listen to our other podcast, Eighties Dreamboats, with Darren and John. Yeah. Uh, but, but today, this is the SNL nerd, so we're here to talk about the latest SNL episode with Jake Gyllenhaal hosting Camila Cabello. Musical guesting. It's from April 9th, twenty twenty two. It's season forty seven, episode seventeen. We're gonna do it right now. Are you ready, Darren? Yeah, come on. All right. Okay. <laughs> we just like got possessed by Hulk Hogan there for some reason. I don't know what's <laughs> on there. But you ready to talk about Saturday Night Live, brother? <laughs> I'm just ripping my shirt off right now. Folks <laughs> are used to. Uh, <laughs> I'm running around the studio and like, you know, play, you know, playing with the with the rope rings and whatnot. I'm jumping off of the bed. Let me, tell you, the, uh... Let me tell you something, brother. Those other SNL podcasts, they think they can recap SNL as good as the SNL nerds. There's no way they can recap SNL as good as the SNL nerds. We are going to bring the thunder. Are you ready, Darren? Oh, yeah, let's do it. All those other podcasts out there, SNL podcasts, uh, talk about SNL After Party, SNL Network. Yeah, you think you're the baddest, you think you're the best, you're nothing when it's compared to the SNL nerds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was pretty good, man. Yeah, that was, that was. We, yeah. I'm, who I knew? Think that was my, 
Yeah, I said our audition was right, th- right there. Wow, <laughs> that's right, that's right. I mean, we perfected our Hulk Hogan impressions because we are nothing if not current and cutting edge. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of current events, uh, in our cold open, we had uh, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson uh, talking with uh, Joe Biden, talking about how she's been confirmed as the first black female justice to the Supreme Court. Indeed. And of course, uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people kind of saw this coming, but, you know, we have Ego as uh, Brown Jackson. We, of course, we get the cold open kid himself, James Watson Johnson as Biden. It was and, uh, again, I will say that. Yeah, yeah, I would say that absolutely, and um, yeah, it's you know it's a big deal, of course. First, uh, black woman appointed to the Supreme Court, and um, so so basically in this uh, cold open, uh, Biden lets uh, Brown Jackson you know stick around the White House and in the Oval Office for a minute to sort of soak it all in, and you know maybe if you're quiet, you can hear the ghost of past judges that you know guide you towards the future, and uh, mm. that's what we get. So. In this sketch, uh, we get um, Kate McKinnon re- re-emerges as Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Bringing back her Ginsburg. Bringing back the Gins. Mm-hmm. RBG, the notorious RGB. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Wow, we're really going to do the, the, the wrestling thing throughout the whole show? Because if we no, are, I'm, I'm all for it. I was more morning DJ, but... Uh, oh, I see. Got no, it. I'm done now. I'm done now. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, it, should we... Should she be called Brown Jackson? Is, is, uh, Brown, is it like a hyphenated last name? I honestly don't know. Or I, I thought Brown was just her middle name. I thought it was hyphenated. Now I don't know. Damn okay. It. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we'll Google that. Um, yeah. Or maybe not. Or we'll, we'll just call her Justice. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, she, she asks uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, hey, do you have any advice for being a Supreme Court justice? And RBG says, always label your lunches. Because apparently somebody on the Supreme Court likes to snatch lunches. Okay. So okay, that's a all right. That's the only line of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's. That I, wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that one down, and I was like, I'm tired of writing down her dialogue. <laughs> and um, well, they also had some burns against Ted Cruz because in the hearings, Ted Cruz was like reading a children's book to her. Right. You know, just very demeaning, and then of course, asking if babies uh, can be racist and all that. Yeah, stuff. like they were basically just repeating exactly what happened during the confirmation hearing. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then uh, Ruth says something like, "Well, if uh, Ted was reading it, it would be a, a children's book like uh, Good Night Cancun," and that's oh, a Ginsburn. Ginsburn, but yeah, with, like she used to do on Update. Um, right. And then we then we had Keenan come in as Thurgood Marshall. Who, uh, oddly enough, sounds exactly like Keenan's Clarence Thomas that we saw last week. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think Keenan is hope is kind of leaning on the fact that oh, no one remembers what Third Grade Marshall sounds like, so I could just you know recycle this uh, Clarence Thomas voice. No, and no one will be the wiser. Uh, calling it a Clarence Thomas voice is kind. It's Keenan's voice. I mean, it's yeah. Saying, I'm just saying. Keenan phones in a lot of his impressions these days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, Thurgood Marshall, of course, first uh, black justice on the Supreme Court, who's saying like, oh, well, it's 2022. You must be like the 10th black justice. And she's like, nope, the third. <laughs> Which, yeah. Yeah. I mean, every every time they say, oh, yeah, she's going to be the bl- first black female Supreme Court justice. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think, really? Really? We've not gotten to that before now? Really? Nope. And then, we... and, and then yeah, and then literally the only other two are Thurgood Marshall and Clarence Thomas, which, that's not good. I nope. mean, it's, it's good that that stuff is happening, but it, it is not happening on the time scale that it should be. I mean, sure uh, isn't. Just, my just, God. Uh, yeah, if you look at the history of uh, the Supreme Court, it is like, uh, like I said, three black people... Uh, a couple women and just a whole lot of white dudes. I mean, when we've had more black cast members on SNL than justices on the Supreme Court, I, that's not right. <laughs> no, it's not, John. No, it's not. <sighs> uh, yeah, progress is happening at a, a, a snail's pace. 
I'm just saying, if we if we got like a few more black women on the Supreme Court, we wouldn't be in as much of a mess as we're in now. Dude, you're you're preaching to the choir. I've I've been making calls, trying yeah. trying to get more black women in there, n- yeah. not to no avail, nothing. Because you know what, they don't they don't have time for your shit. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, they they, they, would, not. they would not put up with <laughs> half the shit that we have happening now. Yeah. And uh, no. yes. Uh, also, in this cold open, we get Punky Johnson in here as a yes. Harriet Tubman. As Harriet Tubman, uh, applause break for Harriet Tubman, <laughs> which I was like, which I, on one hand was cool, on the other hand, I was like, you know, that's not the real Harriet Tubman, right? <laughs> <laughs> you thought the audience was like, oh, they got Harriet Tubman to be in this. Ooh, well, you know, Cam- Punky's not on the show too much. Maybe they don't recognize her. <laughs> They're like, oh, does Harry have a movie to promote or something? Or, yeah. um, so yeah, so we're getting a little more esoteric. I mean, it's it's basically a dream sequence. So, um, and uh, yeah, and they're kind of filling Harriet Tubman in. She's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a justice on the Supreme Court, and she's like, oh, I like that. Yeah, and I'm gonna have this job for the rest of my life. And Harriet Tubman's like, don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was funny. I like that. That was kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, that was all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so to round out the cast of characters that are breaking barriers, uh, then we have Chris Red come in as Jackie Robinson. Yep. Uh, who, who's, his advice is, get ready for batteries to be thrown at you. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jackie Robinson, of course, the guy who broke the color barrier in professional baseball. Um, what year was that? That was like sometime in the 40s, right? Uh, I believe so. I, I'll look it up. I don't. I don't want to say I believe so because I. Yeah, I do I'm not just. Know. I'm just asking if you happen to know. If you don't happen to know, that's fine. Okay. Oh. I can Wikipedia so myself when I get home. Um, okay. I wasn't uh, trying to. Doesn't... I wasn't trying to ask you a gotcha question or put you on the spot or anything. I just thought you might know. Oh yeah. Uh, ten year MLB career. Won the inaugural Rookie of the Year award in 1947. 1947. Okay, yeah, I thought they said 47 in the sketch, and I wasn't certain if that was the the year, but I guess they wikied it there at SNL. Yep. Yes. So. First baseball player, uh, 1947, Brooklyn Dodgers. Okay. All right. So well, there we go. Kudos to you, Jackie Robinson. Yes. We tip our hat to you. Yes, we tip our baseball caps to you. Ah. Uh, uh. Hmm. Um, I thought this was a pretty good cold open. I thought it was fairly funny, pretty good, not too long. Uh, it stayed focused, which I liked. Uh, yeah, I'd agree. I thought this was okay. Um, I liked that it wasn't the regular format that we're used to seeing where they just stuff in a bunch of, uh, you know, they stuff in a bunch of what happened this past week mm-hmm. in like a Fox News or MSNBC type of format. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it just kind of stayed with the one theme of, this historic event happening, you know, first black woman in the Supreme Court and like kind of what, you know, kind of how, how does that reflect on the America's past with the, you know, race and women in such a high, uh, in, in high positions and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah. overall, though, it was okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not too bad. It ended a little abruptly for me, but overall, it was okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, another moment I just remembered was when Ruth Bader Ginsburg was like, oh, I got confirmed 97 to 3. What did you get confirmed as? And she was like, oh, 53 to 47. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg was like, yikes, <laughs> you got an uphill battle. And yeah, it just. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, this country's fucked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this sketch was written by Allison Gates, Josh Padden, and Streeter Seidel. All right. Well, nice job, guys. I Again, I liked it. I liked it. Again, I liked it. It just stuck on the one story. It was only like uh, like five or six minutes long. It wasn't like this big seven or eight minute thing. It, it zipped along well. They didn't feel the need to like tie like, oh, let's get in the Oscar slap in this too. Let's get in uh, J-Lo's engagement to Ben Affleck or other things that have nothing to do with this. Yeah, no. no. They just focused on this, and that was all you needed. I agree. Like they focused on one thing. Yeah, this thing comes in at under six minutes, in and out. Introduce the show. Let's go. Perfect. That's all you need. That's all you need. That's all we're asking for, SNL. That's all you gotta do. That's all, That's all you gotta do. 
That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. All you got to do. All right. So next we have the hostess with the mostess, uh, Mr. Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, it comes out, does his monologue, uh, and it points out the last time he hosted was 2007, which, wow, that seems like a long time ago. It does. I think, yeah, like, the. I mean, the person who's now my wife, I think we've been going out for three years. I didn't even propose yet. Yeah, it, was, it seems like a whole lifetime ago. Wow. Woof. So, yeah, I was, I, was, I was still living in, like, Queens back then. I wasn't even in, even in Jersey. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, this is pre-Jersey era. We couldn't even use the tagline for the podcast. Right? Right? Think about it. Wow. Makes mm. you think. Uh, mm-hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal, he talked about how last time he hosted, which I believe was his first time hosting, he said uh, he came out in drag or, or well, he, no, I, I think he like whipped off his, his clothes and he had like a, a, a dress underneath that. And he said, but he was in drag and he sang a song from Dream Girls. It was like the, I am not telling you, I am not going or. Something. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm not going. I just know that song has a really, really long title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he, he talked about how, like, he tried to do the serious method actor thing for a while, and he was not very good at it. And he eventually realized that acting is a really stupid job, and now he's just embracing the joy again. So then he starts singing the Celine Dion song, It's All Coming Back to Me Now, with uh, Chloe Ego and Cecily singing back up. Right, yeah. And um, I don't know, I think, like, in this monologue and throughout the show, we kind of get to see that um jake is a bit of a you know a theater kid like he's a bit of a goofball theater kid like i, I know because he even says it in the monologue where people think of him as a serious you know stoic dramatic actor which he uh-huh. is a little bit he can do really good dramatic acting but yeah i mean I think, like, broke back mountain is still probably one of his his biggest films i would say yeah i would say so but then you got to remember oh there's this, this still the same guy that was in a uh, boy in the pl- bubble boy, like he still has that goof- he still has that goofy side to him, and That's we get to see that throughout the show. That is true. That's true. Also, Mysterio in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh boy, that's right. And he, he had some goofy, fun, goofy moments in that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I I was not expecting to hear him do a Celine Dion song at the beginning, but I like they played the opening notes, and I was like, is that a, it's all coming back to me now? And, uh, and then he, he goes into it. I was like, it is, it is. It's all coming. He's, he's freaking doing Celine Dion. Yeah. The dude has a song in his heart because uh, in this monologue, we have him singing with Cecily also singing in the, in the background. She's one of the backup singers. This will not be the first, this will not be the only time that the two of them are singing in a sketch. This yeah. is an ongoing theme throughout the yeah. show. And they were they were in like uh like sort of sparkly dresses. They they were looking sort of like uh, the Supremes, or you know, kind of like the the Dream Girls thing he did in his last monologue. And for a minute, I was like, is he gonna like whip off his outer clothing and be in a dress again? But uh, no, unfortunately not. We did not get to see uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in a dress in his monologue. I really thought he was gonna be in a dress too. Like the suit was like a breakaway suit, and we were gonna get the exact same repeat of. Uh that but they, i guess they decided against that you know maybe it's not quite pc so let's just go with uh, the... you know, i think it would have been fun i think you can still do drag humor uh at I times think... i mean you can do a little cross-dressing if it's you know I if it's so. not actually like making fun of cross-dressers or something if it's just more the absurdity of of a dude in a dress I think so. I don't. I don't even know the. I don't know the rules on that. If some it, listeners, if you know like what exactly the protocol is on that, just let us know. Is it okay yeah. to do that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, right. Something I thought was interesting was when they were pulling away from the monologue. I I happened to notice that Cecily was in flats and Ego and Chloe were both in heels. And I guess I guess they did that to because they wanted them all to be close in height. I guess. Oh. Cecily is a bit taller than the other two. But she looked like she's uh, about on a par with Ego in terms of height. I don't know. I just started thinking about this just because I was like, oh, look at that. Cecily's in flats. That's unusual. Oh. Let's, let's find out how tall Cecily Strong is. I always thought she was like kind of average height. Okay. Well, let me let me Google that because now I want to know. <laughs> I see it. Um, Cecily Strong, 5'8". Okay. Oh, oh, it comes up 5'8". You nailed it, my friend. 
Boom. Five, uh, eight. Five, eight. Should we Google the heights of the other two? Yeah. Um, oh, Ego oh. Wodum is five, seven. Okay. I got the uh, then- um, uh, five foot six. Let's see. Hmm. Sorry. Okay. I guess and, and, and tall. five, seven, you said? Yeah. So I guess they're not that far apart. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. All right. Well, now I'm wondering why they did that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's weird. It wouldn't, I don't know if it would have been that noticeable. Okay. I don't even know why I brought it up now. Okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, pretty good monologue. I thought I thought it was fun. Yeah, not bad, not bad monologue. Not, not a bad way to start it off. It's okay. Uh, I did notice that the, no mention of Taylor Swift and the scarf, which I thought was interesting. You no, know, I thought they might hit on it uh, in the monologue or at some point during the show, but no. I guess maybe that's a sore point for for Jake, or maybe they just decided not to even open that whole can of worms. Um, yeah, I think it's like no. I want these. I want these people to like me. I don't want to start off on the wrong foot with this show. Yeah, I mean, if I were in his shoes, I would be like, "Yeah, why, why remind people?" Yeah, let's 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 remind people how good I am at singing. How about how about a Celine Dion song? I huh, got people. Yeah, how about we sing this song by this non Taylor Swift musician? Yeah, let's do let's do that. Let's let's focus on this. Okay. All right, uh, so on to the first sketch, the first sketch uh, game show called Why'd You Like It? Um, mm-hmm. Hosted by uh, Keenan with the contestants. Um, let's see, it was Chloe and then Chris and Jake. Right, this one was written by Mike Descenzo, Chloe Feynman, and Jake Nordwind. Hmm, okay. And, uh, uh, and yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, yeah. Like when I first saw this, I was like, "Oh, another, another game show sketch." Hmm. All right, but um, Punch territory for SNL. Yeah, <laughs> they're really. Oh wow, they're really. Yeah, they're really. You know, thinking outside the box here with a, a game show sketch. But I, I will. Yeah, you know, I'll put. I'll. I'll say by the end of the sketch, I was kind of won over by it, even though. You know, I did enjoy this sketch. I'm gonna. Uh, I thought this was pretty good. the The premise of this was basically getting three people and asking them why they liked a particular picture on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the first person they put on the spot is Jake, who uh, they, they put up a picture of a woman. I think she was like in a bikini top with like a little doggy. What was it? Katy Perry. It looked a little like Katy Perry to me. The woman uh, was- no. So uh, fun fact, that picture was of Adriana Perez. Who's the film unit producer of, of SNL. Oh, so did they take that from like her actual Instagram? They took that from her actual Instagram. Oh, look at that. Okay, well, I guess they they wanted real photos that they could get the rights to or something. Um, right, like right. they 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 put it under a different um, Instagram handle, but yeah, that is her. And also, um, later on, when we see a picture, when they show a picture of uh, Chloe's character, her uh, ex's sister, mm-hmm. that is the writer uh, Rosebud Baker, new writer on SNL. Oh well, look at that. Okay, that's that's cool. That's kind of neat. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's funny. I didn't know they did that because I was looking at that and I was just trying to figure out is that Katy Perry? Because it looks kind of Katy Perryish to me, but it was. I think she was wearing sunglasses, so it was tough to tell. Um. <laughs> right now, that's the film unit producer. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and they're like, uh, so yeah, Jake's character. Why did you like this picture on Instagram? And he's like, oh well, just because she's a friend of mine. Uh, eh, because I like dogs. Eh, well, because I thought uh, if I did that, uh, she'd like that and we'd start DMing and then maybe someday I could have sex with her. (laughs) 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 And and then they cut to his girlfriend in the audience who's played by Ego, who's who's not pleased. She is not happy to hear Mm. this. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yikes. You don't you don't want your man like like another lady's pictures on Instagram, especially when they're they're wearing something uh, revealing. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's I. Um, yeah, that's that's just not a good look, my friend. That's not a good. Yeah, look. you gotta be you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful with that stuff. That's right. Yeah, you gotta be careful out here in these streets. Um, whew. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, like I said, I liked this sketch quite a bit. It kind of reminded me of maybe like Meet Your Second Wife or um, What's That Name yeah. type of sketch where it's like a, it's set up in a game show format, but it's basically kind of revealing, you know, maybe the ulterior motives people have or the, the subconscious reasons why we do things or, the, you know, yeah. that unspoken. And it's all about making it awkward for the contestants. And that's, yes. And that's fun. Yeah, exactly. Like when, like, you know, cause you know, we're all kind of guilty of that. We, we like a picture on Instagram and it's maybe some, a picture of somebody we don't even know, but we have some weird scenario in our mind of what we can get out of it if we like this picture. And of course it never happens. It never, it never happens. No, no. Uh, yeah. uh, it's like, you, Oh, if Dave Grohl sees me liking his picture, maybe he'll be, he'll ask me to be in his band or whatever. <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah but we we keep liking those thir thirst traps nonetheless and mm -hmm. yeah and it it's not just on instagram i can't tell you like how many uh facebook friends that i have like just because i was initially attracted to the profile picture of somebody <laughs> oh, hey now <laughs> i mean and has it ever worked no <laughs> no no not at all <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, well, why did you like uh, uh, Chris Red? Why did you like this picture of of this this painting that was posted by Megan the Stallion?" And he's like, "Oh, well, because I like art, eh, because I'm a I'm cultured, eh, uh, because it's one of her lesser liked photos on Instagram, and I thought if I liked that, that that uh, that would get her attention, and then we'd like it. She'd like that, and then we you know, we'd eventually start talking, and maybe I'd have a chance to have sex with her. Ding, 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 ding." <laughs> Hey, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, it's one of those things where I get the logic, but when you say it out loud like that, I'm like, that's a lot. There's no way that can happen. It's just, oh, man, people are desperate. I mean, it's technically possible, but it's so unlikely I mean, as to be astronomically yeah. impossible. Right. Yeah. Unlikely. That's the word. It's, yeah. it's so damn unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hilarious yeah. that people are clinging on to that hope that it might happen. <laughs> that's right. I uh, keep holding on. I mean, it's they really should just call Instagram Thirst Trap the website. I mean, because that would be more accurate, I think. Agreed. Yeah. Um, oh, and, then, agreed. and lastly, we had uh, Chloe's character. They asked her, "Why did you like this picture of your ex boyfriend sister from five years back?" This is this picture is from twenty seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's weird when people do that. Yeah, it is weird. It doesn't. Uh, that doesn't happen to me uh, uh, too much, but like every once in a while, like on Facebook, somebody will like a comment I made like a year or more ago, and I'm just like, "What? What are you even doing?" <laughs> it's like, is everything all right? You you good? <laughs> and it's and it's really creepy if it, like they liked it in the middle of the night. If they liked something like at two a.m. or or somewhere past that, that's. That's just creepy yeah. white territory. Yeah, they were going for they're going through something. Like <laughs> something, are, something happened. <laughs> something happened. Something happened. Like that, that's a cry for help. Yeah, and I I liked Chloe's uh, character's explanation where she's like, "Well, yeah, if we do this, that uh, you know, then his sister will bring up at Thanksgiving. Hey, you know who I liked? I liked I liked Chloe, and then you know he'll start thinking about me, and then." He'll ask if I want to get together for a drink at Starbucks, and then it ends up with the two of us raw dogging in a Starbucks bathroom. <laughs> I just like the phrase "raw dogging in a Starbucks bathroom." It's a great phrase. It's like almost like uh, the Humpty Hump phrase, yeah. but instead of Burger King bathroom, it's a Starbucks bathroom. They, they it, modernized it. It's it's very evocative. That that paints a picture. Mm, it's provocative. <laughs> Gets the people going. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Get <laughs> Gets people going. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this is a pretty good sketch. I enjoyed this one. Yeah, I thought the sketch was solid. Uh it's a great premise. It's um I mean, yes, it is um a game show sketch, which is something they've done before, but I think this is like a kind of a newer twist on it and like I I just like the way it, it escalates and it kind of talks to people sort of 
you know, like I said, like the, the those uh, things that they have in their back of their mind, they're maybe in their subconscious or their desires that they think are going to happen if they do this one thing, which are clearly illogical and unlikely. And that's something we all can relate to, I think. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I'll be ready to move on to the next sketch in a moment. I just have to like a quick picture on Cecily Strong's Instagram. I'll be right back. Oh, John. Oh, John. What? What? We've, ta- we've talked about this, John. <laughs> no, it's 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 uh, 324 uh, in the afternoon. It's totally not creepy. <laughs> okay. It's of her uh, new book that came out last year. It's totally That's fun. Right. Her book that came out a year ago. Yeah. It's great. I'm just going to check my DMs and nothing. Oh, still nothing. Okay. Mm, All right. Oh, actually, actually, Sarah Sherman has a cute picture of her from the Chucky sketch. I am going to like that. Okay. (laughs) That's fine. So that's, that's cute. But we'll get there, listeners. We'll, we'll get to that Chucky sketch in a minute. Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, next we had a pre-tape, uh, Dream Home Cousins. Uh, this was with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Mikey Day as the hosts of like a uh, home improvement type show. Yeah, I mean, this was written by uh, Mikey Day, Streeter Seidel. And of course, this is a play on the uh, the Property Brothers, a very popular show on HGTV. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, two brothers who renovate homes for people and try to give them their dream home. And so it's like you said, we have Jake and... Mikey has two brothers talking to this couple, uh, played by Heidi and uh, James Watson Johnson, and they want to renovate their their dream home uh, for them. Uh, but they have to switch up a few things because James uh, James uh, mother B, played by uh, Kate McKinnon, is coming to live with them, and she's an older woman with a twenty uh, seven year old cat. So they have to readjust a few things that um, you know that maybe Heidi isn't too wild about. Right. And I, I do like how they note at the beginning of the sketch uh, that uh, the husband, Pat, is deeply uncomfortable as on camera. And uh, James Austin Johnson just did. Uh, he made a meal of that. That was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in this uh, sketch, uh, James plays uh, Pat, who is a very milk toast, very meek, doesn't like to talk back or, or anything type of man. And he's... Uh, he, like you said, he does kind of make a meal out of it. Like everything he does is just kind of like, oh yeah, no, it's, oh, no, it's okay. It's a, yeah, it's a, so, it's... so as they're going through uh, the wife's dream house, they, they were they're showing like her ideal room. And it's like you wanted the living room to just be like a a place where you can relax, and she's like, oh, that looks perfect. But we needed uh, a place for to store the cat's medical equipment, and then you just see the room filled up with medical equipment. So it's just. We're showing the ideal version of it, and then we're showing what it's actually going to be because they have to accommodate her, her mother, uh, his mother, right. at times. Yeah, right. I think at one point they actually have like a you know, no pun intended, a cat scan machine, like one of those huge gigantic things that people have to go into, like in the living room, along with all this like hospital style equipment in the in their living room now. Yep. Uh, and and it's that way for every room in the house. Like the kitchen is cut way down. They they take away the six burner gas stove and they replace it with like the the electrical stove and a toaster oven that were both uh, a bee's existing uh, oven from 1978 and it's like an olive green <laughs> toaster oven. and 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 Kate would just mutter something after every thing and and her her all her dialogue is subtitled which was funny that was cute. Right. I, I did like a few of the one liners she had, like uh, when they were talking about them having to renovate the bedroom, like what they originally wanted with this nice, spacious bedroom for, um, you know, Heidi and the husband, Pat. But now since the mother's moving in, instead of having a, 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 a king size bed, they're having three separate beds with, mm-hmm. with the mother's bed in the middle and uh, the ceiling. They can't have high ceilings because, as uh, Kate puts it, the devil's in the rafters. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, so it's a six foot ceiling and, and her husband is six foot one. So yeah. and he's like, no, I'll crouch. It's fine. Yeah, it, it's not ideal. And and her yoga room is going to be taken over by all these uh, tchotchkes. She has like these ceramic ducks. Uh, I forget what they called them, but uh, uh, wise quackers, wise quackers. Oh, because, of course, they're called wise quackers. 
Of um, course they are. Uh, this was cute. Uh, this was funny. I like this. Uh, yeah, this had like, I mean, I'm, it's one of those things where like, once you get the joke, they kind of repeat it over and over again yep. about like, oh, you wanted this, but you can't because of your mother-in-law. You wanted this, but you can't because of your mother-in-law. But I, the lines that they had in there made it enough for me to enjoy it and be okay with it. Like, um, mm-hmm. like the lines of how they wanted a bathroom with tons of open windows so they can enjoy the view, but the mother-in-law doesn't like that. So now they have a bathroom with no windows. And because she doesn't like windows because, you know, them peepers and tuggers want to see me make my dirt. And, and like, just, like, yeah, just the phrasing of that. That, Yeah, it, it was cleverly written. And I thought the performance has really enhanced it, too. Yeah. And like, you can tell that the mother-in-law doesn't get along with Heidi. Like, she mutters stuff under her voice. Like, yeah. uh, like, I know Skinny Minnie over here opened her leg and stole my son. She took your sweetness before your wedding night. And, and, and then her as I gave her my sweetness. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her my sweetness. <laughs> Just calling it sweetness is hilarious. If you can't laugh at that, people, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah, that was, that was a good solid sketch. I thought. Yeah, I dug it. So yeah, the show's going well so far. Chugging along, chugging right chugging along. along, chugging right along. Uh, next we have Cabaret Night. With uh, cabaret, with uh, the, the singers four. It's a singing group that hasn't sang together in five years, and they're played by uh, Jake, Kate, Cecily, and Bowen. So you know Jake Gyllenhaal and the cast members who really like to sing. Right. Exactly. Uh, this sketch was written by Allison Gates and Celeste Yim. Uh, I, I just right at the at the top we have uh, Mikey coming out ready to introduce them. Um, he comes out to a dark stage, no spotlight. <laughs> and the it spotlight takes a minute. forever to come on. That was really weird. Yeah. That was weird. That was, a, that was a bit sloppy. Somebody was a little asleep on the switch there. I don't know what was oh. happening there. Oh, boy. Come on, man. It's time to light the lights. Yeah. It's time, it's time to, to play, play the- music. There it is. All right. I knew you'd get it. Game. Um... So, yeah, so th- they sing a song for those who are not special. Um, the only line I wrote down from this was, uh, I think it was Jake's character saying, when I pump inside a lady, stuff comes out. So, yeah, <laughs> that's good to know. Uh, romance. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I mean, this is basically a song about, you know, small victories. You know, I can parallel park under any conditions, which is kind of impressive. I'm still working on that. Yeah. Um, whenever I cook chicken, it's never dry. Whenever I finish an entire chapstick without losing it. And I think that makes me a good dad. Yes. You know, my email box has zero emails in it, which, I mean, how do we even do that? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. That seems impossible. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's not much to this sketch. I thought it was charming enough. I guess I thought it was okay. I just thought it was, eh. Yeah. It didn't do much for me. I, I just, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I won't fight you on that. Uh, is it a little indulgent? Maybe, but it's, yeah. I, I found it charming enough that it didn't bother me terribly. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll give it that. That's I don't yeah. Know. Uh, any, I mean, any other... it had bothered me, but it didn't really send me either. So I was just like, eh. Yeah, that that's fair. I'll, yeah. I'll I'll co-sign that. Eh. All right, all right. Well, I don't mean to bring you down. It sounds like you liked it a little more than I did. No, not really. I mean, I thought it was okay. I didn't like. I didn't like love it. I'm not gonna. You know, sing sing it from the rooftops or nothing. But I was like, you all right, this love is- this sketch. You want to marry? This <laughs> no, I don't. Stop. You love it. You want to marry it? You want to no, be bigamous with this sketch? No, I don't. I don't. I don't even like the sketch like that. God. You like it? You like all the sketches, photos on Instagram? <laughs> like five years from now, you're gonna write. You're gonna. You're going to like it, this sketch on Instagram. No, I don't. Stop. God, Lauren. Tron Trumbull's being mean to me. 
Now, John, we what do we talk? We've discussed this. Don't be, don't be, don't pick on Darren. <laughs> okay, Lauren. <laughs> wow, and scene, and scene. Uh, uh, what do we have next, Darren? We got What's spring, uh, spring flowers. Spring oh boy. flowers. This had uh, Jake, uh, Sarah Sherman. Then Cecily has flowers with Chris Red joining them as another flower that just bloomed. And King, uh, who you see periodically watering them. Yeah, uh, this was written by Allison Gates, Colin Jost, Ken Sableth, and Celeste Yim. Uh, yeah, and uh, interesting concept on this one. It's uh, was, we, we all... was it? I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, we open up on... Uh, we open up on Keenan watering its flowers. Cut to the flowers are these days. <laughs> oh, hey, put away that watering can. Uh, we, I don't even know what that means. Uh, yeah, we cut to the flowers. Oh, you know what that means. This guy knows what I'm talking about. This guy knows what I'm talking about. This guy definitely knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, look that up on Urban Dictionary. So, <laughs> Hey, so we cut to we cut to the flowers played by Sarah, Jake, uh, Cecily, and uh, Chris, and yeah, we learn they talk about how great it is to be a spring flower, and uh, then we cut to Bowen, who is a bumblebee, mm-hmm. who uh, then begins humping the heads of the flower, which is uh, something that these flowers very vigorously. He says, "I'm getting pollen on my legs, or whatever." Uh, yeah, this was this was like I was like wh- I mean I'm no prude, but I was like whoa, this is. Yeah. I, this I is think it was. I think it was the noises he was making, Bowen was making that was like, the, like the grunts and groans that was like oh, this is, it's a little off putting for me. Yeah, uh, he also says I squeeze a load of goop out of my butt and people eat it. So, is that what honey is really? Uh, I, I feel like the writers did really Google how pollination works. I feel like that is a somewhat inaccurate depiction of pollination, and, and we maybe should not take this as gospel. What? <laughs> what? At Saturday Night Live, it isn't scientifically accurate? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, oh. then, we, then we had Kyle uh, Mooney popping up as a weed. Um, we had a dog pee on them for some reason. And they're saying, why does the, why is the cloud furry, and why does the cloud have a dog penis? Uh, yeah. Then we also see throughout all this that um, Chris Red's flower is actually kind of into all this. Like he's into dog pee. He's into he because he, he keeps saying the line, "When is it going to be my turn?" Like yeah. the the bees humping the head, and uh, the Kyle as the weed wanting to choke somebody because they, you know, I believe. I'm again, I'm no botanist, but I guess that's what weeds do to flowers. They Physically choke them. I was under the impression that you were a botanist. I feel very I, ha- I, I I don't know how you got that impression. <laughs> I've, I I've mean, repeated. You, you just give out a botanist kind of vibe. I mean, I, what can I say? Yeah, I've yeah, I I am not a botanist, nor have I ever been a botanist. Okay. And, you know, I no no, I don't know nothing about no flowers. What What did you think of the sketch? Oh. Uh, I didn't love it. Neither uh, did I. I didn't hate I it. I did not. I did not love it. I did not like it. I just. I was like. I thought this. This is a sketch that you would show if you were doing a movie, and you had to do like a parody of a bad SNL sketch. That was the vibe I got from this. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I'm. Hmm. Yeah. Just, I, mean, I didn't. Uh, not good. I didn't think it was the worst of the night. Uh, no, that'll come a little bit later, but it, it was definitely, I, hmm. I mean, I guess because they were kind of bringing in all these different things. Like, I thought the bee thing would just be the thing that kind of go through the sketch, but then they brought in the weed, then the dog peeing on them. Then they went to um, Keenan clipping the flower that was Jake Gyllenhaal, and then, like, I guess flower guts sprayed all over the other flowers. And mm-hmm. it just seemed to kind of go in a lot of different directions none of it particularly funny yeah i didn't i didn't mind the 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 bumblebee humping 
Um, I thought that was okay, but uh, yeah, the rest of it, I was like, eh, no. Yeah, and, and it felt like a little long, too. Like, maybe if they shortened it up a bit. It was definitely longer than it needed to be. Yeah. Um, it was a, it was a weird one. Like, I went online, to, and everybody kind of agreed from what I saw in, online. Like, this sketch and another sketch that came on later were, like, pretty not great. Yeah, uh, I but I mean, any of the online feedback yet, but I was just like, eh, no. And I, yeah, I, thought, but, I thought Keenan was particularly bad. I thought he was really overplaying his part. He like, does like, yeah, he does like to ham it up quite a bit. I, I hate it when he does that, where he's just like, mm, I'm going to water the flowers now. and <laughs> uh, Get out of here, Bumblebee. Ooh. Those are the times when I just really cannot stand Keenan. <laughs> Yeah, I go. I'll, I'll admit he 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 plays it big a lot of this. I mean, he can play it. He can pull it back, but then there are yeah. times. Where, I guess he fe- I guess he figured. Well, this is like a really kind of goofy, kind of weird sketch, so I can play weird too, and that would keep in touch with the tone of the sketch. Just over the top, goofy, bizarreness, absurd type of uh, vibe. Uh, but I, I mean, sometimes you don't need. To, didn't, I mean, didn't work. Didn't work, yeah. man. Sometimes less is more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this sketch I was like, this isn't. This is an odd one. But I, I didn't that's a, hate. That's the nice way to put it. Yeah, I didn't hate it, but I was like, I can't really defend it. No. Yeah. It didn't. Didn't work for me. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Uh, what do we got next? Next up, uh, we got another pre-tape. We got Chucky. Chucky. Uh, Dan Bulla and Sarah Sherman wrote, wrote this one. I, I was certain that Sarah had a hand in writing it. It was too weird for her not to have a hand in writing it. Um, this it, it was like three co-workers. They're talking in the bathroom at work. They're talking about like a particularly hated co-worker. Um, <laughs> And they, they compare the co-worker to Chucky at one point, and then it turns out that Chucky is in the bathroom stall behind them, and it's it's Sarah's head like mapped on a little Chucky doll, like Chucky from the uh the child's play horror movies. Right, exactly. Like uh I, I kinda like the little twist in this because like yeah, they are like you said, they're talking about one co-worker. Compare it to Chucky, you hear the toilet flush behind them, you hear the you see the bathroom stall door open. So mm-hmm. you automatically think, oh, it's probably the woman that they were talking about. So to right. have it be, no, not the woman they were talking about, the person that they compared the woman to, Chucky, who was equally as offended that they were comparing her to this woman, Janet, who the whole office hates, I thought was a nice little uh, twist. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was cool. It was cool to see Chucky. And they, they got the weird sort of stop motion walk of the doll down well like uh, chucky of course is trying to kill some of the people with a knife and then it just cuts to them in an hr meeting with uh, jake gillenhall as the uh, hr guy and he's like okay so uh, what what did we learn today like you know one we shouldn't really be uh bad mouthing our co-workers behind their backs and chucky like you learned you shouldn't try to stab people with a butcher knife yeah like the whole tone kind of Really does a 180, like, in that part. Because, like you said, like, they do... I don't think it was stop motion. I believe it was, like, they were actually doing uh, puppets, like some puppeteering. Right. I no, I, I didn't mean to say it was actually stop motion, because that's a very time-consuming uh, process. But it had the sort of stiffness of stop motion, is what I mean. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, like, in the so in the beginning of this, guy, it's almost like a horror movie. They always yeah. they have that classic horror movie, like, shot, where we see from the viewpoint of Chucky how he's about to stab Chloe, and then it just cuts quickly to all of them being in an HR meeting. Yeah. And, um, and of course, Janet's being, is also there, played by 80, is in the yeah. corner, and, like, you know, they all agree Janet is the worst. Uh, pretty is. much to, to her face, they say that. Yeah. yeah. Everyone hates Janet, and <laughs> even the HR guy hates Janet, which I liked, you know, and they all, they all are, like, slamming her for, like, eating tuna every day, and uh, Janet. that is that is gross. If you work in an office, people don't you can't eat fish. That's just that's just that's just not cool, man. And especially don't heat it up in the microwave. Because oh dear God, no. That's yeah, because that that smell lingers. Yeah, I believe somebody can actually like punch you in the face for that, and it, it, like the whole office will be okay with that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> don't, don't bother to Google that, people. It's uh, <laughs> I said it, so it's gospel. But I, I liked how the HR guy was like, well, you know, everybody here has their own stories. Like, you know, like you, uh, Chloe's character, you were in the military. Uh, Chucky, you uh, were under a voodoo curse and you you inhabited a child's doll and you and you're the soul of a serial killer. So, I mean, that's something that nobody else in the office can say. Yeah, very much so. And uh, basically the sketch ends with uh, Chucky pull, uh, pulling out two sticks of dynamite out of nowhere. Uh-huh. And everybody's like, oh, my God, Janet, are you eating tuna fish? And then it cuts <laughs> to I, I like that little twist. I mean, this this, this was so bizarre that I really kind of liked it. I think it might have been sketch of the night for me. Um, I might, There's one I liked a little bit more. But, yeah, I, I, I thought this was a pretty interesting uh, sketch. I mean, again, like this Sarah Sherman uh, anchoring mm-hmm. it. And she really is, like, coming into her own. Like, she's really, like, her brand of, hu- like, when we first heard that she was going to be on the show and we first found out about her, uh, we realized her brand of humor might be too out there and too dark yeah. for SNL audiences. But it seems like she's, like, slowly integrating herself into the SNL fabric and people are starting to warm up to her. And um, yeah, yeah, I would have thought that her humor was a little too uh, outro to... to- Mesh well with SNL, but yeah, she really is messing well with the show, and then she she gives a nice bizarre touch and some some sketches that take some really interesting left turns. So I I thought this was cool. Yeah, yeah, I was cool with this. Um, not not too shabby. Go on, Sarah Sherman, who's actually uh, I believe she's like going out on tour this summer. I think she's even going to be in London at one point. So oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, I did read that. I did read that she is going to be uh, touring. Um, so yeah, yeah. That, was, that was cool. So next we had our musical guest uh, for the week, uh, Camila Cabello. Uh, her first number was Bam Bam. That's right. Song all about uh, Barney Rubble's kid. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone's favorite from the Flintstones. Um, I, I thought this was all right. Uh, she has some backup dancers and there were some nice dance moves. You don't often see people on SNL with backup dancers. So I thought that was kind of a neat uh, change of pace. Yeah, I thought it was a nice little. <laughs> I thought it was very upbeat. Uh, not a not a bad little pop song. I I really dug it. I did notice though. I don't know if you noticed it too, but um, when uh, Jake Gyllenhaal was introducing her, he mm-hmm. was wearing a T shirt that said Ramona and Gloria. Did you notice? Yeah, that? what was that about? Yeah, I, I, I didn't get the reference. Okay, so I had to I had to kind of go back and like you know do a little deep diving on SNL Twitter. So apparently. Okay. Back in when he last hosted in two thousand and seven, when he when he introduced the musical guest, uh, the Shins, he had a black T shirt that said "Just Ramona" on it, and Ramona is his niece, aka Maggie Gyllenhaal's daughter. Oh. So now, so now he's hosting the show that says Ramona and Gloria. Those are those are both his nieces. That's his. That's a uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal's second daughter. Oh, that's sweet. That's that's nice. What a cool uncle he is. Yeah. Right. That's I'm a shout out. Okay, well, let's see. the 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 first kid has to be at least fifteen now. Um, I wonder how old the second kid is. I'm not going to Google that. I'm not that curious, but I'm just idly wondering. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but well, that's a cool gesture. I like that. That's very sweet. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool uncle. Cool uncle Jake. Yeah, he gets it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, the first performance was Bam Bam, which, you know, was pretty good. Then the second one, Psycho Freak, which uh, where Camilla Cabello was joined by uh, Willow Smith on, oh, was uh, that on the guitar. Smith? That oh. was Willow Smith, Willow. I mean, so, she, was, she was just billed as Willow when I watched it on YouTube uh, just a little while ago, so I didn't realize it was Willow Smith. Yep, that's Will's daughter, Will's kid. Oh, okay, well, all right. Well, and, uh, it's nice to see that the Smith family is still getting invited places. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, didn't didn't like the second number nearly as much. Uh, I thought it was, uh, really, I thought it was okay. I thought, like, the um, the chorus kind of reminded me. You know that song, uh, Tom's Diner by Suzanne Vega? Sure. I thought the chorus kind of reminded me of that. So I g- it gave me early 90s vibes. So maybe that's why I liked it a little bit. Uh, more than you. By the, by the way, you know that the Tom's Diner uh, in the Suzanne Vegas song, that's what they used as the exterior for the diner on Seinfeld. What? Yep. Come on now. 
it's Brian. it's like the in real life it's tom's restaurant and yeah she called it tom's diner in the song don't know why maybe just diners catchier tough to rhyme restaurant but uh <laughs> yeah i did i was not aware of that by the way does it ever bug you if you watch a seinfeld rerun Look at the establishing shot of the Tom's restaurant. It does not conform to the interior set at all. Like, at yeah. All. Yeah. My, my wife actually worked on the, she used to work uh, near there only on the upper West side near yeah. the diner. And she said that all the time. Yeah. People take pictures of the exterior of the diner all the time. And you, yeah, you, you look in the diner. It's just like a small ass diner. It's nothing like, the, the TV show at all. It's like, well, I know I, Jerry Seinfeld. He actually shot a, uh, a uh, comedians in cars getting coffee segment with, I think it was Jason Alexander and they shot it on the interior of the real Tom's restaurant. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, apparently TV is lying to us people. It, it's been lying to us at least since the nineties. Also friends. Yeah. The, the, the building that's the exterior of, of, of the apartment building. No, does again doesn't conform to the sets at all. Absolutely, and also, no one can afford an apartment in New York City that big. I'm sorry. No, if, yeah. I, I thought the guy's apartment, like Joey and Chandler, I thought their apartment was more realistic than the the sprawling, you know, nine bedroom loft or whatever that Monica and and Rachel were living in. But well, I, like most people on TVs, they have apartments that are way bigger than they would be able to afford in real life and partly the and a large part of that is just you have to make it, the sets large enough to accommodate the cameras and stuff but right yeah that's true but i actually i think they explained i think in the in the first episode of friends this is becoming a friends podcast now I, uh, they, they say it they say it's <laughs> uncontrolled it's like monica inherited it from her grandmother i think it was yeah i was like all right i guess that makes sense but still yeah. that, that apartment so, was so she's a, illegally subletting from her grandmother yeah Mm, I was like, "All right, I'll, I'll I'll play your game here, friends. I'll uh, go know, along with it." Hey, they at least tried to address it, so I'll give that to them. So, yeah, uh, I guess. But anyway, I wasn't I wasn't too nuts about Camila Cabello's second number. I was just like, "Yeah." All right. Either way, I thought both performances were uh, better than last week. The Gunner performances just were. I don't know his, his performances from last week. I thought were just kind of. Yeah, just really like, kind of slow and uninspired and unenthusiastic. And this, I thought, was a total one eighty. Where like you know, Camilla just looked like she really wanted to be there, jumping around, dancing, just giving it her all. This, uh, you know, there's a big boost of energy in her performances that I appreciated. My big takeaway was that she seemed really horny. Oh, <laughs> oh, behave! I was like, you know, Camilo Cabello got to get laid, y'all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do I make you horny, baby? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in her life, but, you know, yeah, somebody throw her one. That's right. Somebody go like her pictures on Instagram. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Because that's that's how it happens. That's how all sexual intercourse happens. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the way. That's how we're doing it now. Yep. Um, <laughs> so next we had a weekend update with uh, Colin Joost and Michael Che. Michael Che. Hey. Um. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So not too, not too shabby. Um, you know, I'm talking about uh, Kentaji Brown Jackson, of course. Again, um, we got a couple jokes about Will Smith, his ten uh, year ban from the uh, Academy Awards, and of course, Colin Jost had this great take saying, "Well, is that really a punishment? Yeah. I mean, because he can still get nominated for films, he can yeah. still attend after parties, he can he still just... win an Oscar. Yeah, he can still do that." Yeah. He's, he he just can't go to the, like the four hour, kind of boring, you know, award show presentation. Yeah, like, I, 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 see... I liked how he said the real punishment would be to make him host the Oscars. Uh, right, <laughs> and that exactly. would be punishment. And then he said, like, because I can say from personal experience that hosting an award show is horrible. And then they cut to him and uh, Michael Che. I think it was they. It was the Emmys that they hosted. It was uh, the Emmys. Yes. Okay. Yeah. They, uh, they hosted the Emmys together a, re- a few years back, and apparently that wasn't a great experience for them. Yeah. I, I think uh, Che has posted on Inst- He does this thing where he, like, he posts his thoughts on Instagram, but then immediately deletes it. Yeah. Because like, you know, I think he knows that like if you put something up on Instagram, people will take it and misconstrue it and try to 
get you in trouble or you know make BuzzFeed headlines. So he had, he does this thing where he just puts something out there. The show. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, oh, you like so-and-so's picture on Instagram and it becomes a whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, he put this thing about how hosting a award show, there's no reward in it really. Like, you know, you don't really, the, the pay isn't really there. It's like a lot of work for a little recognition. If there's a yeah. dip in the ratings, they blame you for it. And it's like, it's, they say like hosting a award show is totally like a thankless job. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be a whole lot of upside to it. Um, you know, every once in a while, somebody does a spectacular job and they get a nice boost for it. Like, you know, Neil Patrick Harris or somebody like that. Um, he's the only example I can think of. I think he's the only person who's done a good job hosting an award show ever. Neil Patrick. Yeah, that's his, it's just him. Billy Crystal who? <laughs> yeah, I, I got sick of Billy Crystal by the end. Uh, he came yeah. back a couple years too many, in my opinion. Yeah, he came back to the well a lot, but you know, I, yeah, you know, the man likes to entertain. What can you What can you say? Um, but yeah, they all, they also talked about how Trump apparently said that he wanted to storm the Capitol with the the the, the, the rioters on January sixth, um, <laughs> but the Secret Service wouldn't let him do that, and. We live in the bizarro world. We really do. Uh, we really do. And and Shay said, you know, also preventing him from uh, storming the Capitol? Steps. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's fat and out of shape, you see. Yeah, uh, that was a good joke. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I liked it. I also, yeah, I also liked the joke Shay had about um, Miami wanting to be the the capital of cryptocurrency. Because right. just like my because just like Miami, crypto won't be around for in another twenty years. Yep, um, that's a good one. I like that one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I did like uh, after one of Joe's lines, and I didn't write down what it was, but it cuts back to Jay, and Jay just goes, "That was a bad joke," and I was like, <laughs> "Yes, I agree. That was a bad joke." Because I I don't remember what the joke was, but I thought it was lame, and then it cuts yeah. to Jay, and Jay just calls it out and says, "That was a bad joke." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's what I love about Jay. It's just there is absolutely no BS to him. <laughs> like a true comedian, he'll let you know when your joke bombs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. And also, Che had another joke, that uh, that Lucky Charms joke. It was like so corny, it was kind of funny. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where basically them say, like, he, he reported on a news uh, article about how 139 people got sick from eating Lucky Charms. And it's like, right. well, that's that. That is strange. I mean, a few people getting sick from Lucky Charms—that's understandable. But 139—that's tragically suspicious. <laughs> and that was so dumb, I laughed at it. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a bad joke, but God help me, I laughed. Uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, yeah. And we only had uh, one death segment today on uh, this episode. Uh, we, it's the return of the trend forecasters, eighty and Bowen. Did we need the return? Were people clamoring for the return of the trading forecasters? I didn't like them that much the first time around. I don't. I, I the first time around, it, it kind of took me a while to like sort of wrap my mind around the concept of what they're doing. But yeah. like now that I understand the concept a little bit more, and I was like, I enjoyed a little bit more. I can. I think like I think there's something there. But like I understand it if you don't totally lock into it i don't think I don't there's mean, much anything there i i feel like this is a thing that is more amusing to them than anything else than anyone else and i feel like this should have been kept as just a thing that the two of them did together with each other around the office maybe fair <laughs> enough but I, maybe it's a thing about maybe it's the way bowen and 80 play it like they play it like so big where they're talking about uh-huh. th- things that will be in like you know uh like cheating or, you know, f- full bush in the locker room and like things that'll be out, like uh, waiting outside of the waiting room and them saying, you know, suck junk waiting outside of the waiting room. Uh, there's like a, like a few little things, a few little lines here and there. It's like, all right, that's, that's something. But I understand. Maybe it's the concept or maybe it's just that it's like, a, you know, and like, like you're saying, it's kind of like a whole lot of nothing. Like, yeah. You know, just, I, I don't mind this part. I don't mind this segment, but it's like, yeah, I, I can understand how people would be like, what is this? 
Yeah, I, I'm in the what is this camp. I, I, I just it hasn't worked for me twice now. I I hope they don't do it again, but yeah. I kind of fear that they will. I will admit that like they do seem to be enjoying it more than probably most people do watching it. Like at one point, uh, AD is like telling. I think at one point Che is like saying, "What are you talking? What are you guys talking about?" And AD's shushing him and saying, "Shush, shush, shush." Then she goes on a little bit too long with the shushing. And then yeah. she finally says, you are beautiful, but you are stupid. That's yeah. It's like, all right, that's something there. There's something yeah. there. I'm, I, there's something there, but I understand if not everybody clicks with it. Didn't click for me, no. All right. Uh, for, uh, so overall weekend update, what are your thoughts? Uh, okay. Uh, a couple chuckles didn't blow me away. I wasn't impressed with the death segment. So, yeah, it doesn't really rise above okay for me. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, next up, we got Tombstone. Tombstone, Tombstone sketch. All about microwave pizzas. That's right. What are your favorites? Uh, do you like your do you like your Elios? Do you like a DiGiorno? I'm uh, a Red Baron Man. Ooh, controversial take. Red Baron Man. Um, they're 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 nice. They're filling. They come two to a package. That's like five bucks for a package. So that's like. Uh, two fifty for a meal. Uh, I mean, Red Baron pizzas. Proud wow. sponsor of the SNL Nerds podcast. Are they? Are they really? Have they given us any money for, they for are, that? I just gave them free advertising, but that's oh. how much they like their pizza. That's um, all right. I mean, I think that's bad business for you to do that. Just, just but you know, that's well. Look, this is how we learn. You want to send me some of the free microwave pizzas? I would say no to that. Dude, we should really tag them on. We should really tag them on Twitter after this and see if that works. If that does, I'll. I'll it be is shocked. worth a shot. It's, I mean, I, it's probably like the chances of you getting laid off of Instagram, but I'm still going to give it a shot. I'm still going to like that photo. I'm still, I'm still going to tag Aaron. I like the Supreme Pizza the most, but I'll, I'll settle for the pepperoni in a pinch. All right. So, Red Baron, if you're listening. I mean, hook us. We'll even take a coupon if, if you got that. Yep. Yep. If you, yeah. So, like, you know, pl- like, El, hey, if you give us free pizzas, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about how much I love your pizza all the live long day. I'll take, I'll, I'll, I'll wear a t shirt. I'll be your personal billboard for free yeah. pizza. There we go. There we go. We are not proud. Uh, but no, this nope. was not actually about uh, Tombstone Pizza, unfortunately. This was a movie program called Light. It's camera a chew hosted by Cecily Strong. Um, and she's talking about Doc Holliday in the movie Tombstone. But it turns out that there is actually another actor who played Doc Holliday even sicker than Val Kilmer and a movie called Cough, Cough, Bang, Bang. Yeah. And uh, that's honestly pretty much it. Like, so then we cut to the. We cut to the scene, a very elaborate West old Western set. Yeah. I mean, a Western saloon. A lot of work went into it. And yeah, mm-hmm. so that's basically it. We, we have uh, Jake Gyllenhaal as the Doc Holliday role, and he's just sick with tuberculosis, but he's trying to play it off like he's not. We have Mikey as the Wyatt Earp character. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, and he's just challenging these two guys to, uh, to pistols at dawn, of course, while coughing up blood and snot on them. We see all this blood and snot flying right onto um, the two cowboys, Dismukes and Moffat. Mm-hmm. And that's, Moffat I mean, that's, gets fun of it. Yeah, it's it's like a super sloppy double dare. Bad. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. Um, and it's just, yeah. But who wrote this one? Did we, did we say yet? Dude, you're not going to believe it. This was written by Rosebud Baker, Michael Che, Colin Jost and the Please Don't Destroy guys. I I would not have guessed that at all. I would have guessed that Streeter and Mikey had a hand in it. But uh, wow, okay, That's a lot of people writing this one sketch. A lot of people, yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of blood, a lot of vomiting, a lot of writers on this sketch, and uh, and we find out at the end of the sketch that uh, like like Chloe comes down the the steps at one point as a lady of the evening that uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's Doc Holliday has been with. 
And uh, Doc Holliday gets, I think, shot dead because they think he's going for his gun. He was actually going for a pill bottle that was Valtrex, the herpes medication. And uh, Chloe goes, oh, my God, he had herpes, too? <laughs> it's like, I always left you something to remember me by because uh, uh, herpes right. is can't, for life. That's right. Can't get rid of the herp. Nope. Uh, that's kind of weird, right? They still don't have a cure for herpes. You know, yeah, like, what's up with that? Yeah. For herpes by now. Yeah, you think we'd... I mean, come on, science. Let's get on that. Like cancer, I get it. Yeah, it's it's tough. There's a lot of different uh, forms of it. But herpes, I feel like we should have conquered that by now. Yeah. I I mean, I don't know what the holdup is, guys. What's the, what's the herpes holdup? I don't know. I don't know. Let's get to the bottom of that, people. Indeed. Uh, what do we think of this? I kind of enjoyed this. Oh, really? Oh, I was surprised. Okay. You didn't like this one. I I mean, it was kind of... You hated more? Yeah, I wasn't too wild about it. It kind of hits on the same beat over and over again about how, oh, he's sick and he's trying to play it off and he's sick and he's trying to play it off and, you know, and he farts and he yeah. has, you know, some gastrointestinal issues. I, I mean, I guess this kind of leaned more on, like, the gross-out humor factor. Uh-huh. Then I thought, um, I think it was the excessive I, amount of blood that he puked up that got me. I think that was yeah. I think that was the turn for me. I was like, okay, yeah. I'll go with it. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you saw it because you saw it on the YouTube version, but I saw the live version, and uh, they probably cut it out of the YouTube version. But there was one part in the sketch where the camera hit a, a certain angle, and they show um, like Keenan behind the bar, and you can kind of uh-huh. see. Like you know, the bottom half of Keenan behind the bar, and you totally see like one of the stagehands crouch down. That was the stagehand that was like flinging fluids onto Moffat and Dismukes. No, I missed that. Yeah, I didn't uh, watch the show live this week, so I'm sorry that I missed that. I I always enjoy seeing a stray stagehand. Uh, yeah, that, that was a bit of a snafu, but I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe I thought this kind of leaned to heavy into the gross out humor. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I, there was like a few lines I liked here and there, like the line where Keenan talks about, um, you know, how he's angry at uh, Doc Holliday for having sex with his white daughter. Yeah, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. At the end. I'm now wondering if I watched like the dress version or if, if it was an edited version of the, the, the aired uh, version. I have no it idea. Might have. You know, let me know. Was it, was it the same except for that edit? I don't know. Maybe. I definitely saw somebody, like a sta- like some dude dressed in a black t-shirt, crouching behind the bar. And like he looked like the dude that was doing the flinging. Oh, he had the look of a flinger about him? He had a... He, he, he had the, he, one of those flingers? Yeah. Oh, no, that's our word. You can't say that. But <laughs> <laughs> Flingers. Flingers with an F in it. All okay. right. Be absolutely clear about this. I am not dropping in bombs on the pipe. <laughs> Watch your step, Trumbull. Watch it. Flinger. Flinger. Okay. Ryan I, Flinger. I know. I, I kid. I kid. I kid. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's so <laughs> funny when you kid about me using a racial slur. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yeah. cancel John Trumbull. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Uh, yeah. But yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe I thought this was kind of lean more into gross out juvenile mm-hmm. humor, like farting and, you know, blood and coke coughing up guts. I was like, all right, this is, hmm, okay. But I, I will admit, I did like the way it ended, where mm-hmm. um, it ended with uh, Cecily, who is sort of the, the host of the show, yeah. the show within the show. And like she ends it with saying, you know, for um, what was the name? She uh, said, for Rod Chew, I wish to re- remain anonymous. I thought that again. I thought that was a neat, funny, bizarre touch at the end. Like, I, that you know, I liked. That I, that I was like, all right, that was a cool little twist. Yeah, yeah, that was a cute uh, line at the end. Yeah, but I'm surprised I, yeah, for some reason. I, I thought, yeah, I don't know if we necessarily needed someone to introduce it, but yeah, I guess maybe we did. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I was surprised. I thought you'd hate this one for some reason. I don't know why. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I think I just like the absurdity of the guys getting sma- uh, splashed with blood. It was, ah. I don't know. I'm in a charitable mood today. What can I say? Aww. 
the Look check just gets got me in a book in a good mood. Nice. Okay. Good. Wow. Were you visited by like three ghosts last night, or what? Wow. Three I was. I was visited by three ghosts that were all uh, movie <laughs> serial killers. It was. It was Chucky. It was Freddy Krueger, and it was Jason from the Friday the Thirteenth movies. Jason didn't say too much, but the other two very chatty. Well, yes. <laughs> you woke up the next day. You there, boy? What day is it today? Actually, now that I think of it, one of the three ghosts in A Christmas Carol is silent, too. So I guess Jason was the third one. Mm. He, oh, he wow. was the ghost of slasher movies yet to come. Wow. Imagine if they did that, like a Christmas Carol, but with slasher movie, uh, like, ghosts. Like, Chucky, Freddy, or maybe Leatherface. Leatherface. Uh, Jason. You want to throw uh, Leatherface in there? Sure. Well, yeah, I, th- I think you got to have Freddy Krueger in there, but uh, you, you do your own thing. You can go yeah. your own way. Yeah, you can call it another day. Yep. All right. Uh, okay. So, wow, you you're full of surprises, good sir. I, I, for, I for sure thought you th- you wouldn't have liked this one, but here we are. Uh, mystery covered in enigma, smothered in secret sauce. Indeed. Wow. You you are a riddle wrapped in a rhyme, good sir. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, lastly, we have couples counselor. This was a sketch with Punky. A uh, big show for Punky. Punky popped up a fair amount this week. Yeah, Punky and Thank Melissa. You. Yep. Uh, no Aristotle that I saw, but... Uh, that, yeah. that was weird, yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, it's it's weird. It seems like he's... I don't know. Like I, I'm trying to think of the last time I saw him on air. Like, when the last time he... They did, it seems like they did post his, uh, his, his sketch from last week. They, I think they posted that to due to fan demand. Yeah, like uh, if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend you go watch it. It's the uh, Angelo Wedding. It's the one with Gerard Carmichael, where it's uh, his character Angelo singing at a wedding, uh, you know Cecily Strong's wedding, and it is genuinely pretty damn funny. Like I'm really I'll scratching my head as to why this didn't make it. I'll check that out. I'm curious now. I haven't watched that yet, but I'll 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 give it a look. See. Yeah, this definitely uh, should have taken the place of uh, story, which will uh, don't. I'll I'll leave it at that. Okay, um, but this sketch, uh, couples counselor with uh, uh, Punky Johnson as a therapist, and Jake and Melissa Via Senor as a couple in marriage counseling, and uh, Punky as Doctor Wyatt. She keeps getting calls from outside, and she keeps taking the calls, which is is that's kind of weird when you're in a therapy session because you know you're on their time. But uh, and she picks up the phone, and she and she. She immediately goes into a uh, a different voice, and she's like, "Bitch, I told you to call me when I'm not working." Yeah, and she's uh, like, "Oh, so so now you're going to shoot me? Yeah. All right, well, come through, bitch. It's on sight." Yeah, <laughs> and like it, yeah, it, it escalates quite quickly. Yes, and then she gets another call that she answers as, "Hey ho, where are you at?" Um, and yeah, and then she's like, "Darren, this person to like come to the office and shoot her." Yeah, and then and then she she's having the couple read text messages that she's getting, and and she's having Jake read it, and and the texts all start out "girl," and he starts reading "girl," and she's like, "No, no, no, don't do the voice, don't do the voice." But he's he's not doing the voice, which is a little weird. Um, he's just saying "girl," you know. It's he wasn't like putting on a a black like, a, like yeah. hey y'all like yeah I know yeah, what you mean. he wasn't going like "girl." You know, he was just saying like "girl," so that was a little weird that she's calling him out on it. Yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe Jake felt weird about doing it, and it's like I'm I'm not trying to get I'm not trying to get Black Twitter angry at me. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what was going on there, but then then finally, like Ego comes in with a squirt gun, and she squirts him, and and Punky's like, "No, this is my work wig." Yeah, because um, you can't get it wet. Yeah, it was it was a weird weird ending. Um, but they but they all sort of make friends at the end, and she's like, "You see how this resolved your conflict?" Yes, yeah, it's basically kind of what you said. It's where uh, Punky is a therapist, and she's on the phone with uh, hit with her significant other, and uh, yeah, they, they they get into a they get into a, little, a bit of a heated argument, as they say. Yeah, and um, it's like you said, like um. He, uh, she has Jake read uh, the text that she's been getting, and uh, the texts go as follows: "As uh, you think you're the only one 
selling fish out here in these streets, but I don't. I, but I don't need your stinky tuna when I get a when I got a beach of fresh uh, pink salmon every time it rains. I'm go, I'm uh, bring a gun to your office. Yeah. So. Yeah. Of course, you know it's. I don't think they're talking about actual fish. So you know, just uh, yeah, just you can figure it out. I'll, I'll go to Urban Dictionary and I'll figure it out. I'll. Yeah. yeah. Um, what What'd you think of the sketch? Uh, I kind of liked the sketch. I thought it was interesting. I thought the escalation was interesting. Um, I I mean, I like the fact that uh, you know, Punky gets a chance to anchor a, a sketch, and yeah. Punky and Melissa are in the sketch, which is which rarely happens. Two underused cast members, definitely. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, uh, this sketch was written by Rosebud Baker, Alex English, and Ben Silva. And uh, yeah, I know a lot. Of, I looked online. I saw a lot of people weren't wild about the sketch, but I don't know. I enjoyed it. I I enjoyed like a lot of the wordplay about how, uh, you know, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character was, was like reading the text, and at first they say, "Don't read it in that voice. Don't read it in that voice." But then at the end, they're like, "Read it in the voice." Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a lot going on in this sketch, but I don't know. I I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty solid. Uh, I I was more so so on it. I I think I like the idea of the sketch more than the execution of it. I I was like, I see what they're going for here, but it didn't it didn't quite work for me, and I can't quite put my finger on to why. Um, mm. I wanted to like the sketch, but yeah, I didn't. I, I I did I couldn't quite get there. You know. Yeah. No, you're not the first one to say that. I've seen a few people be like, yeah, this was all right, but I don't. Like people couldn't put their finger on why it didn't hit like they wanted it to, and like I don't know, yeah. I'm kind of stumped as to why that that is as well. Like I don't, know, I, I thought I thought the sketch was pretty good. Was pretty good. I, I dug don't it. get me wrong, I didn't dislike this sketch. I didn't. I thought it worked okay, but it, it never quite rose above okay. And I don't know what they could have changed to. I hesitate to even say fix it. I mean, because I don't know if it needed fixing. I mean. I don't know. I don't know. I, I was <laughs> I was partially confused by this sketch, I think. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, it kind of goes in a lot of different directions. It did. It did. But I, I see what they were going for. And I like and I like the idea of it. I liked the idea of the therapist like switching personas and and all that and the awkwardness of uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character reading the text. But right. Yeah, yeah, you think I you think I want your two day old catfish when the tilapia I got at home is so wet it makes the the river jealous? I mean, I enjoy mention of tilapia in any comedy sketch. I think my record bears this out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but still, it was yeah, yeah. This one's yeah, it's puzzling. A lot of people are kind of so so on it, and a lot of people really yeah. like it. It's it's odd. Yeah. So it's a weird sort of Rorschach sketch of a uh, sketch. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so then we wrap it up with our 10 to 1 sketch. Uh, oh, uh, actually, a uh, couples counselor. I don't, I, think, I don't know if we've uh, remembered to mention it. Written by Rosebud Baker, Alex English, and Ben Silva. Did, did I say that already? You did say that already, but it bears repeating, people. Yes, but it bears, bears repeating. Ah. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so. Uh, yeah, uh, final sketch of the night, Truck Stop CD, written by Dan Bulla, Andrew Dismukes, Claire O'Kane, and Will Steven. Yep. Uh, it was written by them, all right. Yes, I concur. I was that. I'm sorry, I was making a note on my phone real fast. All right, no worries. Uh, yeah, so this one starts off with Kyle and Ego as a couple. They're at a truck stop. Uh, they're kind of looking through all the stuff that you that they sell at truck stops. Like, um, you know, bumper stickers that say my other car is a gun. And, mm -hmm. of course, they see a rack of CDs, which are, you know, they still sell CDs at truck stops. And they're like, who, who even buys CDs anymore? Truck pops. Yeah. CDs. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, out pops uh, uh, 80 as the sort of the spokesperson for this one singer uh, who, uh, who just came out with his, uh, you know, his CD of truck driving songs. Cause you know, like you said, truckers still buy CDs. 
So right. uh, this the singer uh, came out with a song with an album called uh, "Truck You You Truck and Truck," right. and uh, yeah, mostly a lot of songs about uh, peeing. You know, cause that's yeah, a big part I mean, of the trucker lifestyle. The first two songs uh, go off on a tangent about peeing in a bottle, uh, peeing in a cup which is apparently a thing that truckers do because they have those insane schedules to make. Um, you know, and so they're all hopped up on amphetamines and they're, you know, cause they have to get across the country in like 24 hours or something insane like that. And yeah, the only way they can do that is that they're hopped up on speed and peeing in bottles and keeping false schedules and stuff. Yeah. It's, oh boy. it's a nutty life. The truckers lead man. Um, oh my Lord. It's, it's not for I, the faint I, of heart. I remember once I, uh, one time after I had like when I was driving um, from from my mom's place uh, back to New Jersey and my car broke down on the way. And so I had to like stay at a hotel on the road and I ended up getting a, a, a ride from somebody. And this guy who was used to be a, a trucker explained to me all this, how he he would like he had to keep a false log for the cops to see for when mm. he was when he was on the road and one time he was like napping in the back uh, cabin of his truck and his wife was driving and a cop stopped him and he asked to see their log. And the wife said, well, which book do you want to see? And then, then the cop was like, okay, get out of the car, get out of the truck. Oh, <laughs> dumb, now, dumb, dumb. yeah, that's, that was fascinating. It was a little insight into the. So, yeah, my dad wasn't a trucker anymore. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's driving a tow truck now, and for a good reason. <laughs> oh dear. Well. <laughs> so so yeah we so we had songs about peeing in a cup, and then and then we had a song about a ghost trucker, and then we had Melissa as El Chapo, and I, a lot of musical numbers in this show. And yeah, for those that are keeping track at home, this is the fourth time. Uh, Jake and Cecily are singing together in a sketch throughout this. I was this at this point. I was like, "Is Jake trying to get cast in a musical or something like that? Did he want to show off his his musical chops?" I I just I don't yeah, know what I, was going on here. Um, yeah, like I, there's a like monologue, uh, cabaret, spring flowers. Now this there's a there's a lot of singing going on in this episode. Yeah. Holy yeah. moly! Yeah. A lot of singing, a lot of singing. Um, yeah. So, so what are your thoughts on this sketch? It was, uh, it remind, it kind of reminded me of uh, those uh, those old Will Forte, Kristen Wiig sketches, like where they play two singers singing about like you know aliens and Model Ts and drinking moonshine or whatever it was. I have no idea what you're talking about, but okay. <laughs> did uh, I dream? That? <laughs> did I dream that? What was? No. It was, uh, uh, Probably forgotten that. Um, I mean, I remember the. Uh, oh, it was Will Forte? I thought you said Will Ferrell. No, Will Forte. I'm in Forte. If I said Forte, I'm in Forte. Um, okay, that sounds vaguely familiar now, but it probably didn't make a big impression on me. But all right, okay. All right, uh, but yeah, I thought it was a you, you very bizarre, Will, odd I you, sketch. I you said Will Ferrell singing, and then I was picturing the Will Ferrell thing that he did with Anna Gasteyer, where he had the beard. And they, and he's on a keyboard, and they were the like, oh the yeah, um, no 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 I'm in I'm in Forte I, I was picturing them and but you said Forte and that makes mm. marginally more sense to me but okay <laughs> uh yeah I mean this sketch is an an odd one for sure that's an odd one that's you know that's what they do at ten to one um, uh, yeah. I thought it was all right I enough. Thought- it was all right. I was, yeah. They went to the yeah. singing world a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's a thing. That's a big. They they went to that singing well one too many times. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I feel like three is plenty for any show, particularly when yeah. you have a guest on top of that. Yeah. So maybe I mean maybe that's why I'm not as warm on this uh, sketch as as uh, as I would have been if they you know had taken out the singing because like I think at this point. I was like, another, they're singing, they're still singing. More singing. We're getting more songs. Again with the and singing. Yeah. <laughs> again with the singing. Yeah. And so, yeah, at this point, I was like, all right, this is, although I will admit, I did enjoy the part where, um, uh, Katie is, sorry? 
where they peed into bottles. Oh, yeah, that was great. I mean, a cup full of they actually say a cup full of piss at one point where I was like, wow. Yep. You could say, I guess you could say piss on SNL. And um, yeah, yeah, but the, the I, am. I mean, you know, I think anybody who's who's watching at this late in the show can hear the word piss. I think. So. Yeah, it's not really a dirty word. I guess. I don't know. It's one of those kind of just one of those like right on the line where it's like it's kind of a dirty word, but not really. I don't know. It was it one of the seven dirty words from George Carlin. I feel like it was. I think it was shit. Yeah, yeah shit, piss, cocksucker, motherfucker, f- f- some other shit. I don't know. Yeah, tits. <laughs> but tits is in there. Right, but I mean, the one point I did like is where um, where they cut back to eighty, who's still pitching the CD to the camera, and then you yeah. see like uh, Kyle and Ego like slowly, you know, creeping past her, trying to sneak out and get away from her. I thought that was a nice little. Like, uh-huh. you know, yeah, I thought that was like nice and then at the very end of the sketch. They're pulling back from the, the truck uh, cabin and, you know, you see the green screen and 80 just sort of jumps in front of the truck. Yeah. Um, she did like a little surf move. Yeah, that was kind of cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's the episode. The end. Um, yeah. Overall, what do you think? Uh, it was a decent show. I think it started stronger than it finished, but you know that's that's most episodes of SNL. Really, they they tend to peter out. Yeah, and you know they 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 cut the really mediocre stuff, and then you rewatch it in an hour long rerun, and you're like, oh, this episode wasn't so bad, and it, and that's how they get you. Yes, yeah, right. It's the circle of life, my friend. It's the circle of life. Everything um, the life I, touches is like. Uh, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was okay. Like I was, I went on uh, Twitter afterwards. It seems like a lot more people weren't crazy about this episode than I thought, which kind of surprised me. Like I've seen people say, like it's so so, it was mediocre, and then I've seen people say it was downright terrible. Like I've seen people say it is. I definitely put it a notch or two above last week's. Yes, so would I. Like I've seen there, there, there's this one person that uh, follows us. And uh, who we follow too, uh, Curly Joe, uh, uh-huh. like they put they put out something like, yeah, this is a, a horrible episode, worse than the Elon Musk episode. And I was like, dude, that is just incorrect. That's that's a bold statement, and yeah, I no way that's worse than this was worse than the uh, Elon Musk episode. Come on, yeah, I, I I've made my feelings on that episode very clear. There are very the Elon Musk episode was was atrocious. It like it was. I'm going to say it. It was season 20 SNL bad. It was like on that level of bad. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. but like this episode, the Jake Gyllenhaal was not, was not that bad at all. I thought it was, I thought it was a fine episode. There's a lot of stuff in there. I liked, I liked that the fact that, um, some, uh, cast members who you don't see that often, like punky or has got more shine in this one. Uh, Melissa got a good amount of shine. Sarah Sherman got to anchor another pre-tape. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of good stuff in this episode, so I, I really didn't understand why everybody was coming all, all knives out with this one. It was very quite peculiar. Yeah, yeah, there was a there was like a, a a bunch of Benoit Blancs out there. Their knives were so out. <laughs> am, I, <laughs> am I right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows what I'm talking about. This guy knows what I'm talking about. This guy definitely knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Thanks uh, very much. That's my time. Tip your waitresses. <laughs> Oh, good times, guys. Good times. Good, good times. Good times. There were also a couple cut for time sketches. Uh, do we want to talk about those? Let's talk about those. Sure, let's do it. Let's do that. Uh, first up, we had Serious Night Live, which was a Kyle Mooney joint. It was a pre-tape. Uh, just him doing like a behind-the-scenes thing of SNL, and it's serious. Uh, yeah, like basically the premise is he's making this uh, sort of very dramatic, serious, like short about like what happens behind the scenes of Saturday Night Live. And like he wants to be sort of taken seriously as a dramatic actor. And then it cuts to like a show within the show where it shows like behind the scenes of what what he's doing, you know, creating this show and how, uh, you know, Lauren wasn't really on board with it and how he put a lot of his own money into it. And uh, right. there's a scene with like a plate of drugs 
And it was like, oh, yeah, those are actual real drugs. And like I paid. With, that that costs those. a lot of money. Yeah. We find yeah. out that this short cost him like $80,000 because yeah. he bought real drugs. He was paying Jake Gyllenhaal uh, $40,000 to appear in it. Yeah. And like Jake was like, yeah, I, I'm just doing this as a favor. I don't really know the guy. It seems like he doesn't get a lot of his stuff on air, which is kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> Again, there's a lot of that, that meta-ness of, yeah, Kyle doesn't get on as much. So Kyle, I guess, likes to kind of play with that, uh, you know, perception of him and just kind of poke more fun at it and make it, like, but, more awkward. But honestly, I, I think Kyle, at this point, he's a weird person to do that joke with. Because Kyle gets on a decent amount. If he you did the off. joke with, like, Punky or Aristotle, yeah, absolutely. Make jokes about how they're not getting on enough. But Kyle, I'm like... Dude, you've been there forever, and and you get on a decent amount. You you uh, pop up at least once a week. Yeah, that that that, that, that that's true. That does make sense. He, I feel like he he definitely gets on more than Aristotle at this point. Oh yeah, is, well, I mean, still... come on. Yeah, and uh, I, I, but yeah, Wally the cue card guy gets on more than Aristotle. <laughs> <laughs> Wally, who's your agent? Yeah, I mean. And, uh, you know, Wally's on late night with Seth Meyers at least twice a week at this point. Wally, yeah. Wally's doing all right for himself. He's basically Seth's Andy Richter at this point. He he really is. We got to get Wally back on this summer. Oh uh, my god, I can't fun. wait. Yeah, I want to talk to Wally again. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So and then the sketch kind of ends with uh, with uh, Kyle saying, "Yeah, I really hope this takes off because I really need to take off." Uh, you know, honestly, if this, uh, this, uh, sketch doesn't take off, I don't maybe see any much of a reason for me to be here anymore in the show or maybe even, uh, be alive. So, you know, just, just retweet it guys. Just retweet it. And you know, that'd be great. That was, it gets, it was, yeah, it gets dark. It, it was just kind of weird. I, I just was eh on this overall. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I kind of like the show within a show where he's kind of, mm-hmm making fun of like the behind the scenes uh you know yeah. shows and, I mean, and I segments like i like to he was like oh yeah we bought real drugs for this and and you know he was talking about all his excess of spending i thought that was all right yeah i liked uh, how he said oh yeah then like the drug dealer just kind of went to hang around said even though i told him not to but you know yeah he's still yeah. here so that's cool <laughs> yeah yeah so uh there's that and uh the second cut for time was uh dinner with the dean yeah, well, this was basically a Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf uh, parody with uh, Jake and Cicely as Richard Burton and Liz Taylor and Andrew Dismukes and uh, Chloe Feynman as the young couple that they have over for dinner and all their all the dirty laundry of their marriage comes out. Have you yeah. ever seen Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Darren? I have not. Uh, <laughs> is it, do you recommend it? Uh, I watched it once. I was like, because I was, it's like a classic film. I was like, I feel like I should see this. I'm curious, like, what's it like? I don't remember enjoying it too much because mm. it's really just like a lot of people yelling at each other for the better part of two hours. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what this was. Uh, I, I enjoyed Jake doing the Richard Burton uh, imitation. I enjoyed Cecily doing Liz Taylor. Uh I, I liked the name Beige College. Uh, <laughs> right. I liked how um, Cecily's character was Vanessa Williams. Yeah, yeah. Named uh, Vanessa Williams. Been named Vanessa Williams, and his the the husband's deep dark secret is he paints pictures of dogs. Um, yeah, you know, like dogs doing was, human things. There was a, a painting of a dog on a toilet. There was a painting of a dog as like uh, Baby Yoda. Just yeah, yeah. a lot of dog stuff. Um, you know, this was when I looked at it and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I totally get why that was cut. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's one of those sketches where like, as far as writing goes, there's not much there. So it really hinges on the performances of the actors in it. Like, like, you know, like Jake, I'll, I'll say this for Jake throughout this whole show. He really goes for it. in a lot of these sketches, he goes big. He did. Eh. He did. And he, he went for it and he, he did a nice job. I think he's a good host. I wouldn't mind seeing him come back sometime. Same. I, I totally yeah. agree. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, all I want is a hope for a host is, you know, they're willing to make fun of themselves. They're game for most anything. And, you know, that they show some discernible talent. So, you know, not so fast, Elon Musk. Oh, um, damn. Yeah. And uh, Kim Kardashian, you can just stay seated. 
Damn. Uh, oh. That's a trum that's a trum burn. Boom. Boom. <laughs> oh, you got trum burned. Yeah. Hashtag so, trum burn. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Trum burn. Hashtag trum burn. Um so uh, yeah, um, but I mean this this episode had enough good stuff in it that uh I didn't feel like I wasted my time over much. Yeah, like uh overall I thought it was better than last week. There was a lot uh yeah, it wasn't perfect by any means, but no. it had it had a lot of good in this episode. I enjoyed this episode. I don't know what everybody who's you know doggone on it are talking about. They're all you're all nuts, you're all cuckoo. I'm right, you're yeah. wrong. You're crazy. You're crazy, man. <laughs> You're crazy. You're crazy too. Uh, so yeah, and uh, that's the episode. So speaking of which, let's let's go to the Twitter and see what our 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 lovely fans think of this episode. Let's let's see what the Twitter people's thought. Um, we got we got Mikey who says another so so episode. Cold open was okay, and the monologue happened. Oh wow! Damn. <laughs> that, damning with faint praise. Uh, J- game show sketch seemed like a good premise, but didn't go anywhere. Um, I like that one. I thought it. I thought that was good. Uh, Weekend yeah, update was wasn't great, but enjoyed eighty and Bowen. Uh, no, um, <laughs> Red got to save the flower thing and Punky's bit wasn't bad. Rest was a swing or a sing and a miss. Yeah, too much singing. I think everybody can agree on that. Yeah. Uh, then we have one from Denoka at Denoka Nine saying, "I thought it was yeah. lame and immature." For an SNL audience, keeps falling flat for me. I mean, lame and immature is kind of SNL's bread and butter, isn't it? Or just yeah. immature, not lame. I mean, if it wasn't for lame and immature, SNL would be like a half hour long. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, you see what I mean? Like a lot of people were really dogging this episode. I was like, I don't think it deserves all the the hate it's getting. It's it's weird. Yeah, like it's I, I don't get that. I don't I don't see where that's coming from. They've they've done far yeah. worse than this. They've done far worse yeah. than this recently. Um Yeah, there's like when I Yeah, there's like when I dog like um like one of those Pete Davidson rap uh videos where everybody else seems to like it. But I'm mm-hmm. like, this is like all right. This is like the reverse of that. Well, I think this show's okay and everybody else is dogging it. I'm like, what's ha- what's what's do I have do I not have my finger on the pulse anymore? Uh you're in your forties, so no. Damn. Um, and our, our friend, uh, Boardman gets paid. He says, uh, he talks about last week, which is a, a thing he is doing now. I don't get why you're a week behind the rest of us. Uh, is, is he <laughs> in like Australia or something? I don't know. If you comment on the same show that we just spent an hour and a half talking about, we will read your comments more. Um, but he, he does say a prediction. I think the show is grooming Mikey day to be head writer. Um, Hmm. I don't. Maybe I mean, uh, is, is Reader Seidel one of the head writers now? I don't. I I can't remember. Uh, I thought he was. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 th- I remember for sure. I know they added a couple people. They it seems they change it up a little every year. I'm gonna see Google SNL head writer. And um, I mean, I don't. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I. I don't know if I buy that as Mikey being uh, the head writer just because he's pretty much well known as being like a cast member at this point. He's a really good straight man. It seems like he's more interested in the acting and being in front of the camera part than the behind the scenes writing part. But I could be wrong, but I, I don't know if I totally buy that he's okay. going to be. Uh, right now, the head writers, Colin Jones, Michael Che, because usually it's the update people or some head writers, Kent Sublet, Elson Gates, and Streeter Seidel. That's, okay. that's from episode 10 to present. So apparently Streeter just became one of the head writers uh, in episode, after episode 10. Um, okay. so, and well-deserved, because I think Streeter is one of the strongest writers they have. Like, whenever there's a sketch I really like, uh, usually we'll, we look it up and it's like Streeter Seidel had something to do with it. It's Mikey Joel. Yeah, so, like, I can see Streeter being, like, yeah, the like, head... I can see be I can see Streeter being the head writer, but mm-hmm. Mikey Day, I don't know if I quite buy it just yet. I mean, if he became a head writer, I would be fine with that. That would be totally cool. I like a, a, most everything Mikey does. He's one of my favorite people in the cast right now. I would say, 
but uh, yeah, I don't I don't see too many cast members dividing their time like that unless they're also anchoring updates. So yeah, very true. Yeah, very true. Um, yeah, and that's the episode, guys. Uh, thanks for listening as always. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, you know just, just thanks for listening, supporting us, spreading the word. If you don't do any of those things, start doing those things, man. Come on. Tell tell yeah. your friend, tell your family members, tell friends, tell everybody always, about this. We're we're yeah. always trying to build the listener base. Uh, if if you can rate and review us on uh, on the podcast app of your choice, that really does help us out. That helps out with you know boost us in the algorithm and the SEO and all that good stuff. And we always like having uh, nice reviews to read on the show. And uh, yeah, so if you do that, uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, as always, you could uh, follow us. At SNL Nerds Show, tweet at mm-hmm. us. Let us know your thoughts, your opinions. Let us know if you if you like it or you know what we're getting right, what we're getting wrong. And uh, yeah, just follow us, and we'll give you a follow back. Just as long as you're not some weird bot or some uh, some freaky uh, spam weirdo. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, uh, you yeah. you go go over to our our Twitters and our Instagrams. We you know we got the SNL Nerd Show Twitter. We also have individual Twitters. I'm for instance, just to throw an example out there, I'm at Trumbull Comic. That's T-R-U-M-B-U-L-L and the word comic. And I'm at Darren Credible. That's D-A-R-I-N Credible. Twitter and Instagram. That's also his Instagram handle. So you can you can go there. You can like his his photos. And, you know, maybe that might lead to uh, some scenario where he has sex with you. But uh, uh, he's married, so probably not. That's right. Highly unlikely. I'm, none of that will happen. My honey, my wife. If you're listening, that will never ever happen. But still, people, you got to shoot your shot. I mean, oh boy, oh you got to do. Oh god, it's getting hot. I'm here. getting you more Instagram likes, Darren. Don't question <laughs> it. Oh uh, jeepers creepers! Like this, this is how Instagram is supposed to work. If people like your posts, you don't respond back. That's how Instagram works. Mm. Okay, all right. I didn't know. This, yeah, this is oh. this, this is a good learning tool yeah why do you think i never post anything on my instagram account no i just use it to like other people's fair enough fair because enough I recognize how instagram is supposed to work fair enough well played sir well played well played i'm i'm instagramming right <laughs> uh but uh yeah so well, next week on snl they got we got one more live show uh before they do another break uh so it's going to be uh, lizzo hosting and musical guesting yeah, that should be interesting. Um, Lizzo mm-hmm. does great music. Uh, I don't believe she's done too much in the way of acting and whatnot. But who knows? It could be another Billie Eilish situation where it turns out she's actually pretty good. She's very charming in interviews and on uh, Instagram and in social medias. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, see how this pans out. Sometimes the musician hosts, they really surprise you. Sometimes you get, you know, like, uh, like a Justin Timberlake who who's really strong and then becomes like a regular host and becomes like a five timer and who is is now one of the people that we think of as one of the great SNL hosts. So it's always nice to be pleasantly surprised like that. This is true. Here's here's to being pleasantly pleasantly surprised, hopefully. Yes. 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 Yes, my princess. <laughs> uh, but we'll see you next week uh, for Lizzo. But until then Nerds out! out! This has been a non-productive media presentation. Executive producer, Frank Hablaoui. This program and many others like it on the Non-Productive Network is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Please share it, but ask before trying to change it or sell it. For more information, visit non-productive.com.